Hello everyone, welcome. Welcome to the study hacks institute of GIS and remote sensing. Today I will try to discuss a very important topic, mainly how we can easily compute urban environmental vulnerability index and then how we can easily monitor the urban stress zone and resilience hotspot. So I will try to show you that all of method then I hope you can easily get the idea how we can easily work with R1 environmental vulnerability index and then identify R1 stress zone. So let's go. So if you check this is the map, it's called R1 environmental vulnerability index and high index value, high positive value indicating about the high stress zone in this study area and low value, it's indicating about the low stress zone in this study area. So now in this case, I try to interpret some vulnerability map, highlight the crucial urban stress zone and resilience hotspot. And I try to use some multi source satellite data. So, first of all, if you check, I try to use here the methane concentration, then I use here the nitrogen dioxide concentration, then sulfur dioxide, and then I also use here the night light time data, also use here the LST data. Then use here the normalized difference build up index and also use here the vegetation. So based on the NDVI, NDBI, LST, night light time, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen dioxide, and methane, we try to calculate urban environmental vulnerability index. And we find out this type of red color indicating about the more stress zone in the urban, and this type of color indicating about that low stress zone in urban. So now how I can create this type of map, I will try to show you that all of step by step, then I hope you can easily compute urban environmental vulnerability index for any study area. So let's go. So in this case, first of all, I just import my study area of Dhaka city boundary and then I simply choose my time period. So in this case, just I put this time period year of 2022 and then filter I just use here the signal to satellite imagery. If you want, you can also use here the Landsat. So I try to use here the Sentinel-2 surface reflectance satellite data and then compute NDVI. So just I compute this equation near minus red divided by near plus red and compute the NDVI. After that, I calculate the average NDVI for my study area and then I display the uh, NDVI map. Okay. So this is my one uh, factor for creating our one environmental vulnerability index. Then I use the Landsat data to get the result for uh, NDBI, I just use here NDBI and I use the formula short wave infrared one band and near infrared band and then compute the normalized difference build up index and then I calculate the mean and then I just try to display the layer of NDBI and same as just I use here the modis. So if you get the more better result, then you try to use here the Landsat satellite data to make the land surface temperature or LST. So if you have Landsat data, then you can easily get the more better resolution of your land LST map. And then you can easily get the more better accuracy of your stretch zone. So in this case, I just use here the MODIS, but when you work, you try to use here the Landsat satellite imagery for the small study area, then you can get the more better map for LST. So in this case, I just use here the MODIS, but you also try to Landsat satellite data to compute LST. Okay, so just I compute the mean LST and I use here the degree Celsius unit. After that, I also take that um, night light data. So this is the data source. I just use here night light data and filtering the select the average radiance band. And then I just simply display. So then I take the air pollution. So for the air pollution, we just take here the Sentinel 5P data set and I compute the sulfur dioxide, nitrogen dioxide and methane. And then for is I simply normalize all of imagery just normalize and after that we simply apply a formula. So this is the formula for um, R1 environmental vulnerability index. So in this time we are just simply add all of those. Only NDVI we are simply subtract from here because NDVI has an inverse effect on vulnerability. So more vegetation equal to less vulnerability. So that's the region we simply subtract this and add all of those other factors. And then finally, we display this type of map. It display this type of red color indicating about the high stretch zone and this type of green color indicating about the low stretch zone. And further, we simply export this map and then we can easily display the urban 
environmental vulnerability index map so i hope you can also get the idea if you have any question or any doubt you can simply ask me in the comment section i will try to give the answer in the meantime i also give you an announcement for coming online training program so this class will be start from 18 july okay and from 18 july it will be started so basically it's a total seven days online training program and in this online training program you can learn all of those from beginners to advanced level and if you have no knowledge about the google earth engine or if you have no knowledge about that javascript or python programming language don't worry about that in this online training program you will learn all of those from beginners to advanced level and further you can easily apply any kinds of emotions analysis very quickly and efficiently so you can check all of course content from beginners to advanced level i try to add all of course content and uh, after completing this training you can get the e certificate after submitting all of assignment you can get all of course material mainly slide pdf you can get all of practice code as well as you can also get the recorded session if you miss any live session then you can easily cover using the recorded class and also get the lifetime teaching support so regarding this online training program further if you face any problem then you can get the free solution okay after completing the total seven days training program and also research collaboration if you have any idea then we just simply make the collaborate and then further you also try to make the scientific paper together so this is the uh, full syllabus you also check so basically uh each day i will provide you total four hours uh, mainly three hours for our live training and one hours for the problem solving class if you are interested to join this online training program then as soon as possible simply contact in this whatsapp number you can also contact with this email and then book your seat so today is no more thank you for watching that stay happy stay safe